Good evening, Guam. Welcome to the After Party KUAM News D18. Introduce our esteemed uh, panelists from the Grand Old Party and the BOTA team. We have uh, James uh, Turbio. Okay. He's, a, he's a confessed uh, liberal. Uh, Logan Rages. Uh, no, you're not. No. Nowhere near liberal. <laughs> and uh, from the uh, Lou and Josh uh, campaign, former Senator uh, Roy Respicio. So our uh, candidates on D18 tonight, Janae Uggen, um, Sabina Perez, I really feel like, even compared with the last time she was on D18, almost as if Janae's running for the wrong party, <laughs> running with the wrong party. Well, I want to be the first to claim her. Uh, she <laughs> was here in the primary, and she did very well. And her appearance tonight, um, she did very well as well, uh, together with um, Sabina Pears. I mean, they, they answered all the questions uh, that they believed uh, was the best uh, answer for what they would do, not the not the popular answer, and so that's pretty refreshing. Logan, your thoughts? You see it a lot, especially with um, I guess politics in Guam in general. Uh, one party in name, but their politics leans one way or the other. It's, right. Yeah. I agree, James. but I mean they were agreeing all all, all night, right? But yeah. what I what I appreciate about Janae. Um, and again, Sabina was very well composed, you know, had, had a lot of information behind her. But what I appreciated with, with uh, Janae was she circled back to, you know, in my life I did this or I was with the uh, Department of Public Health and Social Services. She always kind of circled back to how she can connect with the audience. You know, like, I know this because I did this or I'm a mom or, you know, she, she always did that. And, and I think that's kind of what set her apart in this particular forum. And which is what you need to do when, when you're when you're one on one like that. And so you being with the Republican Party, uh, just wanted to ask, you know, heading into the general, uh, what types of uh, things are you guys doing to to kind of keep your your senatorial candidates on message? Well, I mean, they, we've said it. You know, party in a way, yes, we're you know we have different parties, but you know they all have their own strengths, they all have their own beliefs, and so if if anything, what we try to do is stay true to yourself. You know, people want to know what is it about you, you know, that how do you represent us? Because it's a, you know, representative, right? So you always try to humanize uh, yourself, try to say, hey, you know, I'm just like you. You know, I've struggled. She did, she was, she did a great job in doing that. You know, my mother, she even said we lost her jobs. And right. she, she did all that. And a lot of people, are, you know, can identify with her. And so that's, that's generally what you really should try to do. Uh, as, a, as a proud Democrat, uh, Logan, what do you make of... Um some of the stances Sabina was taking tonight. I think that her leaving the classroom is a great disservice to the children, and a, but a great game for the people of Guam because I think she'd make an excellent senator. Um, if I were in high school, I would ask to be in her class. You know, I, she just has that execution and she thinks about things melodic, methodically, sorry. Right. Um, and she's not, she just doesn't seem like she's moved or driven by emotion, and you right. need that on that level, especially with things that are the Emotional issues, yeah. I mean, a lot of the issues that we're dealing with uh, nowadays, they really incite a lot of passion, yeah. a lot of emotion, and you're right, she kind of seems, um, <clears throat> I remember when she came on the first time, she talked about taking a scientific approach uh, to Guam's problems in terms of, you know, having a theory, a hypothesis, and, um, you know, doing a lot of research, which is something you don't really hear I mean, we kind of laughed at first, right? But uh, Evidence looking based at space decisions. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Why is that novel? Right. Yeah, yeah. I want to say I appreciate what Logan said in recognizing uh, Sabina Perez. She left the classroom because she plays by the rules, and I think it also shows that she's all in uh, in terms of this. I see what desire, you did there. <laughs> all in, <laughs> but with really her desire to want to take a seat in the, or earn a seat in the Guam. Um, legislature, yeah, I've been very impressed with um, Sabina and what she's uh, been able to do and how she uh, presents herself and communicates her ideas. The one thing I've noticed about Sabina is um, going into this, because of uh, the work and the association um, that she had with Patel Latex, and a lot of people maybe mistakenly thought that she was a one trick pony, one issue candidate. Um, and that's a great issue to run on the environment, right? But uh, we've seen with the more um, times that she's gotten out there she's really diversified and shown people that you know she has not only opinions but <clears throat> offers solutions on a, a lot of different issues. and i think you're going to see that across the board with um all the democratic senatorial candidates we, people felt that same way about kelly uh marsh titano where she was being sponsored by um amma joanti uh, joanti uh farms and 
And when Kelly started talking about things other than the activist type of things, like the homelessness and what her plans are, like the hospital and how she plans to resolve that, and so people started really opening up their eyes to her candidacy, and we have Sabobata also, who people uh, you know, thought that he would, because he's a veteran, that's what he would be pushing, and when he came out and started talking about vocational education, and, and so the, the, the same can be true for um, all 15 uh, Democratic senatorial candidates, so there's a lot of uh, diversity on our side. I felt like the um, format tonight really favored Sabina, <clears throat> and I don't know if it's because <clears throat> She answered a lot of questions first, and Janae was, was pretty much like, <clears throat> I agree with you, I agree with you. Mm. But in a, in a larger uh, forum like the one you guys had uh, over at the Guam Young Professionals, how did Sabina fare in a you know, wider field? About the same. Uh, the difficult thing for me as the moderator was to create a well-rounded picture of the candidate, but she did a very good job in, in her opening, just, just like she did tonight. Right. But I think, I think it's, you know, it's, it's difficult to say that, because, you know, Voters are kind of finicky and kind of, do they want, you know, the cerebral, or, you know, I'm going to answer this, you know, or I'm gonna, do I want the one that can identify with me and, and kind of relate their answer in that way. And so if you're looking at the two, they definitely did have separate um, ways of delivering the, the same right. message pretty right. much, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I, 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 you know, she's a personality, you know, Janae just kind of has that kind she's of kind of bubbly. Yeah, she right. kind of has that bubbly and some people like that and some people don't. So it's really hard to say and, and generally, for whatever reason, um, you know, the public likes to kind of balance it out. You know, you'll have the cerebral side, you'll have the kind of more personality side, kind of just kind of balances out that way. We, you never see a full legislature where they're all, you know, stone-faced or right. whatever. Right, yeah. And I know that when um, Sabino, she kind of is coming out of her, I mean, she still has that real, uh, you know, methodical approach and uh, almost stoic. Well, way. you asked uh, James what the GOP is doing to kind of prepare the um, the Republican candidates. I, you know, I need to recognize uh, the Democratic Party through the leadership of Senator Regine uh, Bisco Lee. They've uh, actually, I guess, with modern technology and with the Senate, they're on a chat, so they're constantly talking about. a group about, chat. Yeah, so they're constantly, <laughs> you know, bouncing ideas right. off of each other, and but also they do have these. Um, uh, brown bag type lunches, bring your own lunch, and let's talk about the issues. Let's see where we can start having uh, common ground. And immediately after the primary election, which happens um, historically and traditionally, is the the party's nominee in the gubernatorial race kind of uh, steps in and helps the party. Now the party can take a position because prior to the primary, they can't. And so the Lou and Josh headquarters has been available uh, to the senatorial candidates and as well as some of the resources of that campaign to try to, you know, share uh, with ideas and, and what, needs to, what needs to be done in all these forums. I know that you said that uh, hosting and moderating the, the forums that UIP had that the Democrats uh, seem to be more uh, cohesive as a unit uh, mm -hmm. this election. Yeah. Um, in past elections, I always saw that on the Republican side, like um, a definite conservative slant, um, strong focus on business and economy. Uh, this, side, this time around, it seemed like the Democrats, they just had that very calculated, very prepared um, presentation. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a little different. I think, you know, we do the same thing with the Bolta and the GOP. Um, you know, we, we have meetings as well, and, and we meet with the candidates. I think that maybe the difference that you're seeing is, you know, we really do recognize the strength of all our candidates, you know, what they bring to the table, their personalities. And so uh, you will see coming up, like, I think Rory hit us, the center hit it right on the head, you know, in the primary can't really, you know, do too much. Yeah. But now that there's a clear um, nomination on, on the gubernatorial side, you're going to see more organization. We're going to be, you know, way more involved than we already are. And so you, you're, you're going to start seeing no, that. I should preface, the, the Republican Forum came first. So the Democrats had time to see the layout and right. come prepared and right. see how I moderated. Well, yeah. well I'm, I'm curious with, um, with everything that's happening with uh, Lieutenant Governor Ray Tenorio, you know, with these charges and uh, the senatorial candidates. Um, I mean, it's a pretty diverse group. And then you had, you know, the recent announcement that, I mean, Frank Blas wants to run, the, you know, the party's not uh, approaching him. How's that affecting uh, the unity on, on the senatorial side? Do you feel like uh, the candidates um, 
wholeheartedly want to hitch their wagon to that Tenoriata um, campaign? Yeah, not at all. I mean, we just had a meeting on Friday, um, to, you know, to ratify the results and, and, and to um, fully endorse our candidates. And I didn't see any, you know, any wavering from, from anyone that was there. Uh, we were actually wondering if he was going to show up. And you know we would just Frank Jr. Yeah, and yeah. just go, hey, you know, let's just all 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 uh, let's squash this together. Right yeah, here, just right squash now. right there. And you know, he didn't show up, but everyone that was there is committed, and and I think we're we're as strong as we've ever been as a party. Senator, well, it's good that um, James says they're as strong as they've ever been as a party because all for one, one for all, and I think the the voters are trying to ask individual candidates from all the different offices what their position is, from both parties, what their position is on on the issues that the Lieutenant Governor is currently um, been charged with and what he has to uh, go through. It's extremely unfortunate, but it's something that uh, he has to go through. At the same time, he has to go through an election. And so the other issues uh, come up and come into play, and that's put before the voters to make those decisions. Excuse me there. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, Logan, um, what do you make of the, the Republican slate of candidates? Because, I mean, we, I've, I've, you did the forum. Uh, but you're right, there seems to be a little more diversity in the viewpoints. You don't, um, whereas maybe in the, the, the last senatorial election, you're right, it was like pro-business, pro-build-up. Uh, now you get a Republican candidate like Janae, who, I mean, she pretty much um, said she doesn't support the build-up. She thinks it's uh, bad for Guam. So what do you make of those uh different kind of viewpoints on the right that you would normally find on the left? Well, it, it makes things interesting. Um, I think, I, maybe I could speak for my age group, I'm 37, and right. um, I, see, I see kind of a shift in the political spectrum when it comes to voters, especially my age and the conversations that I have. Um, and we're not really looking for everyman politics. We're looking for people to actually have solid stances on mm -hmm. different things, whether they be a Republican or a Democrat. Um, we're not looking for people that are agreeable, you know, uh, would you be opposed to this? Well, I would consider it. We want to know where you, sa where you stand on things. And that's interesting because um, the primary, we saw uh, people were really, a lot of the candidates were really wishy-washy. Uh, no one wanted to take a stance. So, I mean, on both sides, Republican, Democrats, I mean, you ask a question, you would get, oh, yeah, I feel this way, but I'd be willing to feel that way. I mean, if that's what you, you want me to feel, do you feel like, uh, heading into the general, everyone's kind of buckling down their stances, and is the GOP really saying, hey, uh, no matter what you stand for, get out there and make sure people know where you stand? Well, you know, this is it, you know. <laughs> you either get in there or you don't. There's 30, there's 30 people, and, right. you know, going back to the format here, you got another person right across you, and you have to kind of convince people, you know, I'm the best choice as opposed to someone right. else's. So yeah. you have no choice but to have firm stances, uh, right? I mean... You have to. You have to sell yourself at, at this point and, have, and be believable to the public that you're going to do what's best for them. And so, yeah. You know, and you're right, Chris. You, you, on both sides, you could certainly see the transition from when they first started as a candidate to today. Uh, in, in our case, in the Democratic Party side, uh, you could see some of the candidates first starting out at the village meetings and, you know, how they presented themselves back then versus... Today, they have their speeches down to three minutes. They're, they're sharp, they're energetic, they're enthusiastic, and they know those critical elements to thank the people who put the meetings together, to uh, ask the people to vote for them, and in a very uh, minute or two, explain why they're uh, wanting a seat in the legislature. Uh, and then, so that's, that's what I think they've learned um, just by going to these meetings, and, and, and they're studying, they're studying, because they, with this day and age with um, uh, modern technology and, and social media. And I've, what I've seen in a couple of fundraisers, I know that Lacia Casil did this the other night where she took questions from, from the audience, from her, her people that showed up. And even you would think they were there to uh, support her, obviously, but they didn't give her any passes on the kind of questions they were asking her. And then she just one by one was answering the questions and put on Facebook Live. I, I believe um, Clint Rigel did something like that as well. And so you're seeing this kind of um, different kind of interacting with the public as Logan right. pointed out, and it's very refreshing. So Logan, uh, Sabina, uh, Janae, honest opinion, I mean, uh, which one of the two or both or none do you think is gonna end up having a seat in the next legislature? I think Sabina's definitely gonna have a seat in the legislature, and I would hope that Janae also makes it in actually. As a startup and a small business owner myself, anybody who wants to 
deregulate <laughs> so that small businesses can and build up and help the economy. I'm all for that. And she has some very solid ideas. Uh, I asked her straight out about the filing fee for the LLC, and she's like, yeah, it's $1,000. We need to get that down. Right. And yeah, she brought up a good point about, uh, you know, something I do, making Denancy. And, uh, I mean, to make Denancy, you need to do the same amount of, uh, you know, uh, paperwork and licensing mm -hmm. fees and spend the same amount of money as someone who wants to open a full-blown restaurant. I think there should be some, you know, I mean, yeah. right. they should right. scale it down. This is where the, right. the, the, you know, the Republican and Democrat sides is like regulation, deregulation, those things right. come to play, right? Yeah. I think if you remove their political labels and just recognize that they're women, I think they uh, do have a great chance of having uh, women on that majority in the legislature. Right. Uh, together with the governor's office, of course, Adley. <laughs> But I'm just saying with Janae <laughs> and with um, Sabina and I mean, I would like to see a majority of female legislature uh, for one. James? Um, yeah, these are great times. I mean, yeah. you know, that we're, we're able to talk like that. You know, we have a lot of strong women running. I, you know, either of them, I, I, I kind of like, uh, you know, they both are obviously knowledgeable. Um, you know, they both have their own strengths. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if both of them made it. Uh, I, I really don't. Um, I just kind of wish we had more experience in there. I mean, you know, we, we had the center in and some of the other ones that left, you know, uh, I, I am a little worried, but at the same time, you know, they have great, there's great staff out there. And, and I think having young and dynamic, dynamic people making up uh, our, our future is, is always going to be good for that. I think, you know, you know but new yeah. people, new people. Definitely proven interesting this last term. Yeah. I mean, would you almost wish that some of these, um, Long time uh, guys and women with institutional knowledge would do more to like mentor some of these. Uh, I mean, if you look at who's, um, they even well, BJ Cruz over at OPA, right? But you have know, uh, Senator Frank Hogan, Senator Davis Rodriguez, Senator Tommy Morrison on the Republican yeah. side, Senator Espaldon. I mean, these are guys who, you know, have uh, been on the grind for the people of Guam for, you know, I mean, collectively 20, even in some cases 30 years. You almost wish that they would kind of take some of these candidates under their wing on the Republican side are any of the um, outgoing uh, senators like Senator Morrison or Senator Espeldon on doing that I, I know they, uh, they they do actually I'm pretty sure uh, they go up there why would not you you know you have you have a wealth of knowledge uh, I mean there's a lot to learn even even if you're there for for one term you learn so much you know and, and again the, the great part is there are people who our staff staffing there that's been there for years that also impart their knowledge too. So it's not like when a, a new senator gets in there, they totally don't know what to do. And there's right. people there that can, that can help yeah. them. But yes, um, definitely, you know, they don't, it's not like they're going to move anywhere. Or, you know, they disappear. Yeah, they're definitely going to be there for, for the candidates on, on, on both fronts. Yeah, and sure. I totally agree with James. And I, for me, I think too that it's the um, individual. So if someone has a lot of um, institutional